All right, this is a demo of the IOTAS, which we built at Linux Conf AU 2017 in the, in the Open Hardware MiniConf. So it's an ESP32 based board with a touchscreen and ILI 3941 uh, video driver. It has two LEDs that are actually being run as NeoPixel compatible, a rotary encoder. I hear there's a joystick on the other side there are two buttons that are behind an I, uh, IO expander, so they need a bit more work to get to uh, than just reading a pin on the CPU, but my library takes care of that. And then there's also an infrared LED, an infrared receiver, there's an SD card reader here, which I'm not currently using, and there's also a speaker beeper, which doesn't quite work, this is actually a tweeter it's the wrong uh, thing, and uh, it's missing an audio driver. Uh, there's also a microphone somewhere which is not quite wired right and not being used uh, for what I'm doing. For comparison, this is here uh, Expressive uh, W Rover board, which is similar CPU, uh, pretty similar video chip to, and I'm running a, a limited version of my demo on it since I don't have I.O. on it yet, uh, so I cannot interact with it as well. But uh, let's go back to um, the IOTAS and do some demos and see how it works. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is boot the IOTAS. I'm going to reset it here. And with the little logos, it's able to display pix maps. And now we have to interact with it. Uh, I actually broke the touchscreen that it came with, sadly. So I have a replacement touchscreen, which is wired reverse from uh, the one that it came with. Uh, so right now if I try to touch, you can see the touch is in the wrong place. You can see the selection. If I go left, it goes right. Uh, thankfully, I have written code to fix, take care of that. So you can move the selection here either with the rotary encoder um, and select with button B. So now I can do a calibration by following the lines. done there we go it's showing that it's reverse so it knows now what to do and see now i can select properly where i'm going like this and the interesting thing is on both screens i got here you can see the colors being a bit wrong in the corner it is a the corner here uh it's not the same sensitivity to touch and the colors are actually uh the pressure of the touch so it still works but it's not it's just not showing the right pressure here but hey, well, you know, it's a cheap thing, so you can, uh, in most demos, you can use button A to clear, clear the screen. There we go, so you start over, like this. B will exit the demo, go back to the main menu. And uh, we've already seen here the rotary encoder. So actually, now if we pay attention in the corner, you see LED brightness, it's actually the controlled by the rotary encoder, so at 16 right now it's very bright. If I go less bright, you can see the LEDs going down. The LCD backlight also goes less bright. It's kind of, you can see a little bit, and now it's completely off. That's the minimum brightness. It's a little bit difficult to control the brightness with PWM because this is also behind an IO expander and you cannot talk to it more than about a, more than maybe a thousand times a second. So it makes it difficult to get different levels of uh, brightness, but I, I have four levels that are visible. And the brightness is more visible on the LEDs. So I'm gonna make it less bright so I don't overwhelm the camera. And then by pushing the rotary encoder, when I'm turning it, now you can see the speed number going down to one. And the colors that are automatically changing are not changing a lot more quickly. I know it's a bit hard to see on the camera. And I'm going to slow it back down by turning the rotary encoder while keeping it pushed. And now the LEDs will take more time. I'm going to put it back to a brightness. There we go, like this. So that is, those are the basic controls uh, of the board. Then I'll be showing uh, different demos after that. Okay, the last bit of hardware that I hadn't shown yet is the infrared receiver uh, right here. That's yet another driver that did not exist for ESP32, so I had to port it. Um, it wasn't actually too hard. So I'll just use this demo uh, uh, remote here. Uh, you have a learning mode where you basically 
uh, push the key, see what kind of code they give out, and then next time you can put that code in your code, and when you see it, you do things. So here the code for red being recognized, there you go. And I can blue, and I can also turn the screen off and back on. Of course, you could do a lot of other things, but that gives you an idea of the infrared capability of, uh, of the board. All right, so now we're gonna go through the different demos uh, that are available. So we already looked at the first uh, one. The LED off here will actually turn off the LEDs. Uh, some people actually don't like them, find them too bright. I'll use touch paint. So that's the one from Adafruit. I just ported it to my code. Uh, it's not directly compatible because you have to select uh, the screen uh, every time you talk to it uh, with a chip select and the Adafruit uh, code does not support doing that via an IO expander. But otherwise the rest works uh, about right. Of course the library was actually modified quite a bit uh, by uh, me, no dev on GitHub who works for Expressive and made the library a lot more quick uh, than it used to be. Uh, the original library uh, over SPI was very slow and this one is actually quite fast. So that's just a basic demo. Uh, again, in any demo, you can use A to clear and B to get back to the main screen. The joystick is just really a joystick test. Uh, with this one, I can move the dot and it shows where it goes. It's not really that interesting, but it's good to show the, the joystick coordinates in the corner and how you can convert them to screen coordinates. That's really the main uh, reason for this demo. All right, I'll get back one level. I'll do a relative. This one is a bit more fun. Uh, you can actually move the dot with the joystick. It's a little bit like a edge to sketch, although it's the joystick itself, it's difficult to get proper round diagonals, but hey, well, it's still uh, something. So I'll get back to the main menu. All right, the accelerator one is more fun. I'm gonna select that here. It's now using the accelerator on the board, which I for forgot to mention in the um, features. And you can actually draw with it like this. That's basically just a quick demo. All right, I'll get back to the main menu. Uh, other features of the board, by the way, yes, there is a um, temperature sensor and humidity. The temperature is wrong by usually 10 degrees centigrade because it's too close to the chips, I think, and it's just being warmed by the board. So when you boot it, it's good for a short amount of time and then it gets, uh, as the board warms up, then it becomes wrong. There's also a voltage I'm reading here, which is com completely wrong for LiPo. Um, sadly, the analog read on either the chip or the current um, libraries do not work uh, it, the analog read doesn't work very well and gives out garbage values from time to time. It's not, they're not garbage, but they're off by a bit, like this one. So there's no good fix for it now, but maybe later. All right, color selection. So this, col uh, this controls the color of the left LED. So right now I'm gonna put the red the green to almost zero and the blue to max and that gives you purple, right? The other LED is the opposite color. Uh, so everything is, see, green being zero is actually maximum, which is why it's green. So let's uh, get another color, green, blue, and take off the red to zero. Sorry, zero here, there we go. So that gives you that color, uh, not very visible, but you get the idea. That's a way to move a cursor and control the LEDs. All right, I get back to the main menu here. The rotary encoder, uh, that was definitely a lot of work to uh, to make it work. There's um, a timer. Uh, I used to have a timer interrupt to read it. Now there's actually a pin interrupt, which does the right thing, and it's very precise. I'm using it to also use the scroll feature of the LCD driver at the same time on a bitmap. So the bitmap's not being redrawn, it's just being scrolled by the chip controller. And then when you push the button, it resets to zero just to show the push and release um, like this. Okay, back to the main menu. 
Those demos are not very exciting. They're the, act the demos from the Adafruit library, just to show how quick they are compared to uh, the original, uh, which was very slow. So I'm going to skip some of them because they're kind of not uh, too exciting. Demo sauce, that is the nice one. Um, I found this code um, on a fork of the ILI driver uh, with a TZ chip, and there were some very nice demos, which you can see right now. Um, so I had to port the primitives used for, uh, by that code to be compatible with the ILI driver. And you now after some work, I'm able to, to run them. Uh, those were never able to run on anything but a Team Z before. And now they're actually able to run on anything with the screen. So very nice demos. And not only the demos, but the transitions between them are actually quite interesting also. Uh, I think the transitions are even random. So like you can see a transition here. So very cool demos. I can't take credit for writing them. I just did the work to allow them to run. And we also already saw the calibration. And then we're left with two games, which I'm gonna show last. Okay, so now it's time for games. Let's first turn off the LEDs. There we go. And we'll try Breakout. So this is code I found on the net. Uh, it worked for another kind of uh, board in this one, a slightly different driver, but I was able to port the driver primitives to this driver so that it would work. So let's uh, first try with a red rotary encoder. And there we go. Hard to play like this, but you get the idea. And then you can also play with a joystick. The joystick actually is more challenging because there's a huge um, calibration problem with it too. The center is not the same for everyone. There's a big dead center which I had to program in it. Uh, but you can actually move faster if you move the joystick a lot as opposed to just a tiny bit like this. So you have a few, few bugs in the game, but yeah, you get the idea. Okay, now we're keeping the best of for last, maybe Tetris. So that's again another game I found. Uh, I did not actually write the logic, but I had to port the driver uh, primitives uh, so that this code would work and make it compatible with the hardware uh, that's on this board, which is of course not quite the same. So now it should be calibrated for most joysticks by just being uh, very conservative in how the joystick is being used. Uh, basically, I'm just converting left uh, to five levels of left and the same for right. And I'm ignoring everything else. There's a huge dead zone in the center so that it doesn't like move when your joystick is not being moved. And that hopefully will work for most boards. So there you go. That would be Tetris. And that was it for the demos. I hope you enjoyed them. A lot more can be done, but that's been literally well, actually almost three months of work since I came back from the conference. Um, and a lot of that time was actually spent on the drivers uh, because there were none. <laughs> I mean, there were some drivers that existed, but they didn't work uh, for this board. So I had to port them, find existing drivers and make them work, and then deal with the, deal with the IO expander, which is an issue because drivers don't know that the pins are not uh, available directly.